Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Canadian Track Guide and Setup. So, Canada, once again, uh, a good track. I love this track, but in this game, you know, you gotta take a lot of the curbs, which makes it super, super RNG and sometimes unpredictable when you go over those curbs. However, there's a few things you can do with the setup and the way you drive it to make it much more comfortable and, well, uh, I'll say a uh, less painful experience on the curves. Let's put it that way. And uh, once again, we're going to be doing in the week up in honor of Danny Ricardo's uh, exit from F1. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the business end of it. And very quickly, thank you and a shout out to all the channel members and the subscribers for supporting the channel in whichever way you love. And uh, let's get into the track guide here. And uh, let's see... How do you begin your lap which is going to be pretty much the same way how you're going to end your lap as well uh, in a minute or two you gotta take a lot of that curb on the inside right cut the first right and then you open up the exit here now heading into turn one look for this uh, uh, patch on the right the cement patch or that orange marker or that exit road after that that's going to be your braking reference depending on how late you want to brake uh, as long as you take a lot of that inside curb, sacrifice a little bit of speed on the first left so that you can be tighter and open up this right hander here. Be tight on the curb, but don't take the curb too much. And uh, on the exit, open up the steering, let the car run wide and power out as soon as possible. Now heading into turn 3, 4 here, you can actually wrap this out in 5th gear, which is much faster. So you'll need to brake very little and you can just carry more speed into the corner the engine braking really helps either way around 60 meters 70 meters is where you want to brake and take a lot of that inside curb here and uh, this will help you to open up turn four the next left hander take a lot of the curb as well go on the grass if you need to that's going to help you carry more speed downhill and now heading into the end of sector one around 75 70 meters ish break in a straight line you can break going outwards use that little white patch on the right side as long as you're using a lot of the inside curb that's going to be the best way to go around here uh, don't take half the curb take full curb otherwise it's going to spin you out uh, and then that's going to help you to open up the next right hander and again let the car run wide on the exit straighten out the steering open up drs and wait for the next braking zone this next chicane is uh, make or break pretty much sometimes uh, look for the 100 meter board on the left as you go under the bridge that's where you're going to be breaking down to fifth gear and throw the car into the apex here onto the curb take a lot of it same for the next left hander take a lot of that exit curb and flat out all the way just make sure you're not using too much of that exit curb there on the right keep to the left and look for the breaking between 50 and 100 so roughly around 70 75 meters you want to break in a straight line and then you want to aim the car into the apex here and uh, we lock up just a little bit but uh, we managed to get the car turned in and rotated just nicely and once again let the car run wide on the exit slow in fast out use the curb to minimize track distance and then keep your car straight open up drs and run down do that final chicane where it's going to probably invalidate your lap 9 out of 10 times. So 100 meter board. Uh, in the force feedback, sometimes you can feel a little bump uh, around this mark. So that's going to be a good point of turning in and, uh, and down to fifth gear and aim for taking a lot of this inside curb, which will help you to open up this next left hander and help you to carry more speed on the exit of wall of champions here stay to the right to minimize track distance and gain some more lap time and there you go very quick and furious lap around canada i think um, since then i've actually improved a tenth and a half uh, thanks to turn three four by ramming out in fifth gear so definitely try that out it's going to gain you a lot more time over there and now let's get into the setup for today special we have two setups one from me and one from a good friend in the server Mavis so thank you to him as well shout out to him for that setup so let's get into my setup first I'm using a high down force version which is 35 35 wings and surprisingly in Canada um, you need to use a lot of wings here and you don't really lose any top speed um, going any higher than 35 here 
uh, but uh, you know you can adjust your front wing maybe about 37 38 if you need to you can use a little bit lower arrow about 32 32 or 30 30 as a baseline and then you can adjust the front arrow to give you a little bit more uh, downforce if you need on the front uh, but 35 35 i feel is the perfect one for here and then differential 90 on throttle you can even use 80 or 100 in certain corners uh, in my best lab actually i actually uh, used 80 in most of the corners off throttle keep it at 10 for qualifying and go up to 20 for the race maybe even 25 or 30 for the race to give you a little bit more stability and keep the engine braking at 100 to help you to slow down the car much quicker and regenerate a lot of ers you can try to use 90 if you find the rear locks up a lot uh, which is quite an issue in this track if well it's heavy braking track anyway suspension geometry everything minimum as usual uh, nothing much to explain about that and we move on to the suspension so we have a very soft front suspension of 31 to help you to take a lot of that sausage curbs and i've raised the front rider to 24. alternatively you can use 18 front ride height with 41 front suspension gives you about the same feeling it's a little bit more agile but it's a little bit more scary to take the curbs that's what i feel so my preference is going to be using 31 front suspension 24 front ride height it's perfect for me uh, for the rear suspension because canada is a track where you need a lot of rear end grip rear traction is quite important here a lot of slow speed corners so i'm going for one on the rear you can go higher up to five but nothing more than that and the rear ride height around 55 to 60 is the sweet spot 55 is much quicker but you have to be a lot more precise with your inputs 60 is a bit safer but you may find it a little bit slower but by about one or two tenths at most in the race it's almost not noticeable but when it comes to qualifying that's where the difference is made right so if you want to be quicker in qualifying you have to use a setup that is quicker and just uh, adapt to it in the race now for the anti-roll bars 21 21 as usual uh, 21 on the front to give you maximum stability and responsiveness same for the rear gives you maximum responsiveness allows the car to turn much quicker around the corner but if you feel it's turning too much on the entry or the exit you can drop it down to 19 or 18 that's a good uh, range to be on even down to 16 is pretty good actually um, if you want an even safer setup and then we move on to brakes 100 percent brake pressure as usual you can maybe use 99 or 98 if you find it difficult to maintain the brakes um, but otherwise you know that's the default you want to go for 53 brake bias is what i'm using for most of the corners in qualifying and then in the race you want to go up to 54 55 sometimes even 56 or 57 uh, on some corners especially heavy braking at the hairpin uh, that's where you will find the car uh, most likely to lock up so be careful in those corners play around with the brake bias for each corner it's good, definitely going to help you to get a little bit more lap time per corner and that's going to add up to probably half a tenth or one tenth overall and tire pressures maximum for the race maximum for qualifying also i didn't find any use going any lower than that because it started to affect my stability in high speed corners here but yeah that's about it and now we move on to the second setup provided by mavis here uh it's equally quick um i was just within half a tenth of my pb which is really nice and reassuring here a uh, similar story here it's a 40 30 wing or you can use 45 35 as the higher downforce version and play around with the wing levels that you want uh, but as a result because you're having a lot more front grip uh, you need to stabilize the rear so you have to use about 35 off throttle to make sure the car doesn't uh, spin out that easily in the corners and then we move on to the uh, suspension geometry which is again similar no changes here suspension there's a little bit of a difference here uh, because there's a lot more front arrow you want the front to be a bit stiffer and more planted so that's why i'm um, using a 41 on the front suspension with a 22 front ride height it keeps the car quite stable and prevents it from bottoming out and 18 on the rear anti-roll bar 
it's pretty good 60 on the rear right height is pretty good and three rear suspension just to play around with that and see uh you know finding your sweet spot so around one to five rear suspension again like i said it, it comes into personal preference and how much overstay you want in the car and brakes 99 brake pressure is what mavos likes to use in its all setup so which is uh, nice to see something different and uh, brake bias again is personal preference from corner to corner i'd say somewhere around 53 54 55 is the sweet spot for all corners in this track and then we move on to the tire pressures which are going to be exactly the same in a moment yeah there you go uh, tire pressures are exactly the same there you go that is the setup and track guide for canada hope you enjoy this i'll leave you with the full speed hot lap take care everyone stay safe and goodbye